Now, Mike, 54 Australians have uh, ridden in the Tour de France with Cadell Evans, of course, our uh, only winner at the age of uh, 34 back in 2011. As a 31-year-old now, Richie Port with uh, BMC Racing. Where, where do you see his future and path maybe going forward now that he's got that leadership position? Well, you know, he's learned so much from his experience at Team Sky with Chris Froome, who uh, also uh, is, uh, is a participant of the Launceston Classic from a couple of years ago. And, um, well, he's, um, he's picked up his apprenticeship and he's on his own now. He is the team leader of BMC. And by finishing fifth at this year's Tour de France, he's learned so much more. Um, I really do believe that Richie um, is so determined to uh, um, expand on his experience. And uh, I believe me when I say, I, I really believe that he, he has got the talent and the skills and the experience to climb onto the podium. It'll be very difficult for him to knock off the likes of uh, Chris Froome, who is going mm. for a fourth Tour de France victory. But BMC will certainly you know, help Richie as much as possible. He is going into next year's Tour de France with one aim, going into next year's season with one aim, and that is to win the biggest bike race of them all. I think he'll be up there when the whips are cracking, for sure. Yeah, no, very exciting. Uh, certainly good to look forward to. Uh, Mike, looking at your own career, well, uh, you covered your first Tour de France in uh, 1996 with SBS, when I think at the time it was just uh, highlight packages coming into our uh, living rooms. But the coverage now, it's progressed to uh, two live stages in 2003. Then, of course, since 2005, uh, SBS has telecast every stage live. You must be very proud looking back over 21 years of involvement, Mike, that you've been a part of this, but also where the coverage and I guess the interest in cycling, not only from the cycling community, but the community as a nation has come. Uh, you must be very proud, as I said, in regards to the coverage with SBS now and, and the popularity of uh, one of the, the truly great annual sporting events. I am, Rick, very much so. As you say, back in 96 and, uh, you know, during the latter part of that particular decade, the 1990s, there were very few people watching professional cycling, the Tour de France. And, you know, uh, the figures that we were getting back then on SBS were basically zero. Mm. Uh, Astro, there, were, there was nobody watching. I don't think the Australian public understood what a three-week bike race uh, meant and was all about. And not taking into account that uh, the tour dates back to 1903, but I think it's there. There are many reasons why it has flourished over the last 21 years, and that is because uh, of SBS's commitment, but also the success of the many Australians and the non-European speaking riders, like Lance Armstrong. Of course, we know what happened to him. We won't go into that here, here and now. But there are other uh, English speaking riders who have dominated the tour particularly uh, in recent times, Cadell Evans being one, Bradley Wiggins a winner, Chris Froome. But prior to that, you had the Robbie McEwens, the Stuart O'Grady's, Brad McGee, and, um, you know, the, the riders from Down Under, who not only uh, uh, participated, but also won stages and picked up yellow jerseys, Robbie McEwen being another one as well. So it is twofold, I believe. Uh, SBS giving the event the exposure and the Australians enjoying so much success, and of course non-European riders from uh, Great Britain and, uh, and Australia also enjoying success. It is truly an international event. But away from the sport itself, Rick, uh, you've got to take into, a, into account the fact that it is more than just sport. When you look at the scenery, when you look at the chateaus, when you take into account uh, the cuisine, the history, the magnificent scenery that the tour um, um, also covers. It is more than just the pushing of pedals, the mm. tour. It is so much more. It is a complete package. And I think that's the attraction for viewers. We have changed the landscape for the Australian television viewing audience. Um, it's not just AFL and NRL and cricket that takes place in July. It is a beautiful bike race on the other side of the world that attracts a television audience from Australia. No, it most certainly is, Mike, and uh, an event that I know uh, we're very proud to uh, be able to sit through in July every year and, and watch it on our screens at home, the magnificent coverage. Uh, as you touched on, Mike, um, that coverage, we also get to see the uh, magnificent culinary delights of uh, France. Uh, hopefully you get to experience uh, some of that as well as we sit back in our living room salivating over what uh, Gabriel Gattay uh, serves up. But tell me the truth, Mike, part of this trip down to Tasmania, you must surely love the culinary delights that we have on offer and, and if and tell us some of your favorites that you uh, make sure you get on the menu 
Well, look, France is known for its uh, gastronomical delights. There's no doubt about that. And uh, we make it a point, the SPS crew, to enjoy a dinner, uh, uh, you know, as much as we possibly can, as well as we possibly can. Um, you know, France is a wonderful place. But look, don't discount Tasmania. I've been to Tasmania, as you know, every year since uh, 2002 uh, for work and for pleasure. And I've got to say, the food down there is equal to anything you might experience in France, um, particularly the oysters. The oysters from St. Helens, oh, yes. for me, are the best in the world. And I don't say that lightly over on the east coast of Tasmania. So, um, you know, that's the beauty of this sport. It's not just about sport. It's about so many other things, cuisine being one of them. Absolutely. I'm uh, with you there on the St. Helens oysters. So we might have to uh, partake of a few of those on uh, Sunday evening. Mike, look, we're really excited to have you coming down once again. Thank you for your support of this uh, great event, the University of Tasmania Launceston Cycling Festival, the weekend of November the 26th and 27th. Make sure you come down around the, the Launceston City Park and see not only our great local cyclists, but some of the great local cyclists uh, on the world stage that are going to be down here for this great event. Hopefully the weather, Mike, is going to be like it is today. It's about 21 degrees in Launceston. It should be perfect. But also thanks to you uh, for giving up some of your family time there in New York to join us this evening. Uh, great to chat. Look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. No problem, Rick. I'll go back into Manhattan and have a burger or two, <laughs> as you do here in New York. But looking forward to the St. Helens uh, oysters in a couple of weeks' time. Sounds magnificent. Thanks very much, Mike Tomolaris, joining us from New York.